What if I told you that I found a history-bounding skirt pattern with a silhouette inspired by the 1940s on the outside, but with giant 18th century pockets on the inside and an adjustable waistband to fit your body regardless of weight fluctuation? Hello friends and welcome or welcome back. I'm Shannon Meeks, historical costumer by day, circus artist by night, and today I'll be taking a break from a longer, more complicated project with a fun new history-bounding skirt pattern that I'm super excited about. It's the Cuclico skirt by Wildflower Designs, and there are so many fun features in the skirt that get me excited that I not only immediately purchased a pattern, but I also reached out to the pattern creator, Melanie, to see if she'd chat with me a bit about the pattern, the inspiration behind it, and her creative process. So join me as I talk with Melanie and get this skirt made up. But first, I've got to clean up this table. I feel like sometimes just the way that YouTube works, you know, with releasing one video at a time, you can kind of give the impression that I'm only working on one thing at a time, but that is definitely not the case. If you're a coffee member and you've been following the monthly vlogs, you'll know that I more often have like four or five projects going at once, plus another handful more on the back burner. And this one, I am so excited about it, but it's also been taking quite a while and I'm hoping this skirt project will be a fun little break for a fast serotonin burst to kind of shake up this project. All right, so the table is cleared, the room is clean, and I am ready to print off this pattern. Well, I guess that kind of leads me super perfectly into my first question, which was kind of about how you got started with making and selling patterns. Like, what was your path into this? Yeah, I guess, um, I guess I started sewing back in 2019. And I just got obsessed, you know, I think like most people, <laughs> you just start sewing and it's amazing. And I was working an office job and I don't know, I didn't feel like fulfilled, I guess. So I needed to do something creative and I was taking architecture at the time. Yeah, I started that in really early on. I just, I realized like, yeah, it's not quite for me. Like I like the design aspect, but you know, you can't really work with your hands when you do architecture, right? you're just designing a building, but you're not building it. <laughs> and I like to, I like to get in there and do it myself and build things myself. So exactly. You are yeah, basically just, an architect I, just with a different medium. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really started loving sewing and fabric and, you know, all that stuff. And I, I had this idea for the skirt. I grew up really interested with people like on YouTube or uh, Instagram doing kind of like history bounding or, you know, a historical dress, but also I really like vintage dress. So I, I don't know, I came with, up with the idea for the skirt and I was like, well, it'd be really cool to have something adjustable because a lot, I think I made a few skirts or trousers and stuff. And I always got annoyed with the waistband, especially when I was working in an office job, I was sitting all day, especially after lunch, you know, like, it's just like, oh, this is too tight. So I'd have to like unbutton it. So I, I just came, I, I saw the idea of like the petticoat and I was like, oh, that's really neat. And then I saw a vintage pattern. I don't remember what it was. I think it's buttering. And it had that same idea, it has like a adjustable waistband, very similar to the Coquelico. That's kind of where I got the idea. But then I was like, well, it doesn't have pockets. So I had to add pockets. So I decided to kind of mix like an 18th century inspired dress and pockets with this vintage um, image that I saw on Pinterest. And yeah, that's kind of how that started. All right, so we have admittedly had a quick uh, costume change because it is really 
really cold in Montreal today and my thin little shirtwaist just wasn't cutting it in my drafty old apartment, but I assure you this is still the same day, the same sitting. I've gotten all of my pieces trimmed down, assembled, cut out, and ready to go and it went really well. It was quite smooth, very quick, and I would say that if we ignore the time that I spent moving the camera around, which admittedly was quite a while, I would say that the whole process probably took about an hour, which seems really reasonable. Everything lined up really well. The registration marks were super easy to use, so it was a very enjoyable process. The next step now is getting to work with the fabric and I am super excited about the fabric that I'm using for this project because it is this absolutely gorgeous orange and gold plaid print with this really fun little metallic gold thread running through it which when it catches the light it kind of gives off this really fun little shimmer which I'm having trouble capturing on camera but I think it's going to be really fun on this skirt pattern specifically so it is already pre-washed and all that's left to do is kind of just give it a nice iron so it's nice and flat to cut out all these pattern pieces. And the instructions did say that for my size, I should need two and a half yards of fabric, which I'm pretty sure I have here. Uh, I'll make sure to be a little bit careful and double check on that before I start cutting things out, but we should be good. So yeah, now I'll just give this a quick little press, press, press and then we can move on to cutting things out. Mm, I'm so excited about this fabric. It's just so pretty. All right, so I've got the fabric all ironed out. It's laying nice and flat and open on my table. And I did take advantage of that to go ahead and measure the width and double check how much fabric I had. And I'm really glad that I did because I discovered that I'm a little bit short for what I should need. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. I'm only missing about 10 inches or so, but it does mean that I need to be quite careful with my fabric layout. So that's kind of my plan for the workaround on potentially missing fabric. I will say that the nice thing about this fabric is that it has those nice long stripes on it. So it means I can use those stripes when I'm folding the fabric and when I'm cutting things out to make sure that I'm staying on grain. It just makes it that much easier. I do think that I won't be trying to pattern match too much just again because I'm missing yardage and pattern matching does tend to eat up a fabric. It's not the most efficient way to go about cutting out a skirt but I'm not too bothered about it because I am doing the more voluminous version of this skirt which is view B. It has a lot more fabric in the skirt which means that if there is a seam where the pattern doesn't quite match up there's a pretty good chance it'll be hidden in the general folds and volume of the skirt so it shouldn't be too too noticeable but it does mean that I'm definitely going to make sure to cut the center front on the fold so that I don't have a seam there which is something I generally would be doing anyways but it just really confirms that decision for me. So let's go ahead and start laying these pattern pieces out and cut some patterns shall we? So I made that pattern kind of for myself, but I knew that I wanted to um, make a pattern and I knew I wanted to sell it. So I knew that this is something I wanted to try and do. I took the pattern workshop course it's run by Lauren Dahl. She, she teaches how to turn a pattern into a PDF, like using Illustrator and all that. So, and I already had some experience with Adobe Illustrator when I was doing architecture. So kind of had a starting point with that so yeah I, I basically scanned the pattern and although at that time the pattern was not at all what it is now <laughs> it did evolve over time
Houston, we have a problem. So as it turns out, I made a rather large error when reading the yardage chart for this pattern, and I was looking at the yardage for view A when in fact I wanted to do view B, which is, go figure, the more voluminous of the patterns. And instead of needing two and a half yards, I in fact need something more like four and a half yards. And since I was already worried that I was gonna be a bit short on fabric for the two and a half yards, I think it goes without saying that I am going to be significantly missing fabric for view B. So as I see it, I kind of have two options moving forward. One would be to take the four panels of the skirt that I have cut out and make two of them the back panels and then just do view A of the skirt as it's written, which is definitely an option, but I think it's gonna leave me, first of all, with a skirt that is significantly less voluminous than I would like, but also I don't think I'll be able to do the adjustable waistband portion of this pattern because in order for it to be adjustable, you need to have enough volume to kind of expand and contract and I just don't think that I'll have that with only two panels in the front and two in the back. So instead, I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna go through all the pattern pieces and identify which ones are the ones that are going to be really visible from the exterior of the skirt and try to cut all those out from the remaining yardage, including, fingers crossed, two more panels of the skirt, which means I would have six panels, which hopefully would be enough to allow me to do the adjustable waistband version. Then I'm gonna go digging in my stash and see if I can find a fabric that is complementary or goes well with the orange fabric and use that to cut out all the remaining pattern pieces, which in a perfect world would be all of the ones that are going to be hidden inside the skirt, like the pockets and the inner waistband, things like that. So that's the game plan. Keep your fingers crossed that it's going to work. So much for a quick and easy project, eh? about as well as could be expected considering the circumstances. I was able to squeeze one more set of panels and a couple other of the more visible exterior pieces of the pattern out from the original orange fabric. And then I was able to find a nice, lovely light brown cotton that complements it pretty well for all of the remaining pattern pieces. So now there's just a few last things that I'd like to do before I call it quits for the day. One of them is to throw some stay stitches in the waistline of all these skirt panels and then that way I can hang them up to drop overnight if they're going to do that. And then the other thing is to look at which pieces need to be interfaced and go ahead and attach all of that. So that way when I come back tomorrow with a fresh set of eyes and a creative problem solving spirit, I'm ready to just jump right into the assembly process. Fortunately, the very first step in the instructions, assembling the 18th century inspired pockets, could be completed exactly as directed, which was a fantastic way to warm up my brain and ease into the day's sewing. What were the various iterations, like from that original pattern to the pattern that you offer in your shop today? Like what were the various steps or features that maybe got added, got cut out? Like what was that path like? Yeah, so the first version of the skirt, uh, that skirt had a basically like a string that you tied up instead of the lace up panel thingy, which wasn't really comfortable. It, was, it did the same kind of thing, like it kind of dug in because it wasn't wide enough, like the string was too narrow. So I was like, I need to fix this. So I came up with the idea of the D-ring loop. Um, and now I can make the waistband a bit flatter and wider so that it's a bit more comfortable. And then I decided, well, I need an, a different option. I didn't want to just have a pattern with one option. So I was thinking like, oh, well, what else is 18th century like? And I was like, well, a corset. I was like something weight, like lace up, right? 
but I was like, well, how's that going to work? And I don't remember exactly how I came about with the idea, but I felt like in a wide waistband, like it's on the inside of the skirt, so you don't see it. And I wanted something wide because, again, like when you're sitting down a lot, you know, whether at work or at school or whatever, you know, you need something, you don't want something digging into your belly. It's not really comfortable. So yeah, I was like, oh, it's something wide, you know, it's like a, it's like a hug, right? So kind of got that idea. That took a while to design as well, because I had to figure out like the curve of the pattern piece and, and all that and like how I'm going to put the loops on and all. So that took a took a little while to figure out it. And yeah, I, I'm sure I did have quite a few variations. And then with the like the ties, I actually did make a really early version with, with the side buckle, but I didn't make a side buckle. I just had a couple buttons because I didn't have enough fabric to make the ties. So <laughs> I, was, I was like, well, I'll just like do these little tabs and put a couple buttons on. It's not quite as adjustable, but uh, you know, there's lots of options. It's nice to have options. <laughs> I was going to ask what your next pattern is going to be. Is that going to be the patch pocket or do you have um, something else that's maybe in the works? No, the patch pocket is like, I kind of started it and then I realized I couldn't put it on my website for free. So I'll figure that out eventually. And But I, I do have lots of ideas for future patterns and I've just really started like the very beginning stages of drafting. Um, I'm not going to say everything, but gonna be like a vintage like 50s inspired uh shirt dress with the sleeves are gonna be special that's all i'm gonna say special sleeves <laughs> if it, i'm hoping it works out i haven't tried it yet i haven't seen if my idea will work but that's the idea so hopefully <laughs> yeah By this point, the skirt panels had been hanging for almost two days, so they had plenty of time to stretch out, and I definitely expected to see them drop a bit more along the sections of the skirt that were cut on a bias. They did drop a little bit, but maybe only a centimeter at the most, and I suspect that has to do with the fact that the fabric seems to have a small percentage of spandex in it. Nevertheless, I decided to trim it all up now, and make my hemming job later that much easier. Well, this is the moment I've been putting off for a while now, and it's figuring out how to put a pocket into the middle of this skirt panel. I've done something kind of like this once before when I needed to put a pocket in the middle of a one-piece circle skirt, so I kind of have an idea of where I'm going, but also I'm sort of completely winging it. Can you tell us all about the numerous variations that can be done with this skirt? Because I feel like it has a lot of different ways that you can make it up or style it. And I was wondering if you could kind of go through all of those for us. Um, yeah, so the main pattern has two views. So view A is the slimmer half circle skirt. So it's just uh, two panels. I just put the simpler uh, waistband with that. And then view B is the gathered circle skirt, so it's double the skirt panels, so instead of four, it's eight. And then that, that you have the lace-up inner waistband, which is nice, a lot of people like that because, um, especially if they have a heavy fabric, like a wool or something, uh, that, that inner waistband really supports the weight of the skirt. And then I did make a note in the pattern that you can make the ties extra long if you want to tie them around the front. Because sometimes I like to just have a bow in the back, but I want the option to bow it in the front too, because it's cute. <laughs> and then on my blog, I have a side buckle hack. So if you don't want ties, because some people don't really, that might not be their style or uh, they want a different look. Yeah, they got different options. And then I, I also made another blog post to add a ruffle. So it kind of just adds a bit more of a cottage core in springtime. <laughs> um, we're light, you know, lighter weight fabrics, maybe. 
You could just make the skirt normally and add the ruffle bottom if you want it extra long, or you can add two ruffles. You can make the ruffles, you know, whatever lengths you want. And then、um, last year I released the pin four and apron expansion, so it makes it even more versatile. So it's, it's up for people to interpret and do as they, you know, as they want and use their creativity. So I have solved my mid-panel pocket problem, and I think it turned out pretty darn elegant. In the original pattern, the pockets get attached to the edges of the back panels, but obviously we had to go a little bit off script here and change it up. But now all of the raw edges are hidden. The pocket is quite firmly attached, and the bottom of that slit where the front panel opens and closes is reinforced with an arrowhead tack, which is basically just a fancy bar tack. And that's going to reinforce that section so that over time, as the skirt gets used and that panel gets opened and closed multiple times, it shouldn't tear or disintegrate because of all that stress. So now what's left is the front panel and the back panel need some gathering stitches put in their waistlines. Then that's going to get gathered down to a predetermined length, and then I think the next step is going to be attaching the waistbands. Normally, it would have been the waistbands, but because I've gotten myself into a bit of a yardage pickle, I actually needed to sew my panels together first, which I did using French seams for a nice clean finish inside and out. I was wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about what the pattern creation process looks like, because I was poking around a little bit on your blog, and I see you put out calls looking for pattern testers. So I was wondering if you wanted to like talk a little bit about what that process was for you once you have a pattern and you're ready to test it. What is your yeah yeah strategy? Yeah. So、um, I mean, there's lots that goes into a pattern before testing. Like that's a long process. <laughs> Um, with my last pattern, I had already tested the size twenty, which is kind of the base for the larger size range. Because the last pattern, I separated into two blocks because it's it's adjustable, but not quite as adjustable as like the Cuckleco skirt. So the Cuckleco skirt kind of has two blocks. Well, has two blocks for the lace up waistband, but the skirt itself, since it's so adjustable, it didn't really need two different like. You know, a size six block and a size twenty block pattern. You know, I could just go to zero zero to thirty two. Like my future patterns, I had to kind of separate them, right? You know, I can't just make a size six and then just grade it up to thirty two. It won't work. <laughs> so、um, I had to separate it. So I、um, I did create the size twenty pattern and then I tested that before grading from fourteen to thirty two with it. Yeah, just to make sure, because you want to make sure it fits before you grade it, because that's a lot of work. <laughs> and then once the pattern's all pretty much all done, I, I really look for pattern testers.、Uh, I'll just make a call out on usually Instagram, and really just a lot of people are willing to help, which is really nice. You know, like I don't really have the budget to pay pattern testers. Like I know some larger companies can, which so I really appreciate when. People are excited and willing to help out, and they get the finished pattern for free. So, so it's really helpful when sewists are willing to help a small business like mine. <laughs> I'll have everybody on the face like a private Facebook group, and、uh, they get the pattern. And you know, I usually give them a three to four weeks to work on the pattern. And、uh, but you know, there's going to be errors because <laughs> with so much detail and like a sewing pattern, going to be spelling mistakes, or you know, maybe somebody has better ideas or they don't understand like how I worded the pattern. So sometimes it's overwhelming, but it's. Really helpful, and that's what makes pattern ready for everybody. So <laughs> I really appreciate those people. Yeah, and so once that's all done, then I can、uh, put the pattern on my website and sell it, which is always super exciting. <laughs>
If you are watching and thinking that you might like to make a skirt for yourself, but you have no idea what I was doing for certain parts of this project, I invite you to join me next week for my behind the scenes video, where I'll go through the actual construction of the skirt, as well as my thoughts on a couple changes that I made to the pattern. If you enjoy my videos and you'd like to support the channel, I do have a coffee account where you can leave a one-time tip or become a monthly supporter for access to things like bonus blog posts and monthly vlogs with behind the scenes shots, looks into future projects, and of course, bonus Corgi content. That will be linked in the description and the end screen. And as always, I appreciate any and all support, even if it's a like on the video or a friendly word in the comments section. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like more of this type of content, feel free to stick around the channel and check out some of my other videos. But enough blabbering, let's jump to the final reveal. So that's the Kukliko skirt in all its history-bounding glory. Let me know if you are interested in tackling this pattern, and if you have any questions about its construction, be sure to check out my behind the scenes video, which should be on your screen right about now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in my next video.